Hi, I'm Liza Lawrence, host of Wonders and Miracles podcast, and this is episode 136, mini message, Overcoming Fear. So my question is, does fear have a purpose? And have you ever had an experience in your life that created intense fear or pain? So much fear and pain that you weren't sure you could move past it. How did you get through this? Maybe you're still existing in that fear and struggling to move past it. Do you think it's possible that God could help you overcome your fear and pain and move forward with faith and trust? Have you ever experienced God helping you do that? So those are the things we're going to talk about today. Last week on my podcast episode, Carrie shared what helped her overcome her intense fear of having another child after losing her first baby to a rare genetic disorder, spinal muscular atrophy. She had so many miraculous experiences that helped her move past her fear and learn to trust God again. So go take a listen to her story if you haven't heard it yet, because it is beautiful. But I too have had heavenly help overcoming intense fears and pain in my life. So I'm just going to share one experience um, and then my thoughts on the purpose of fear. Does fear have a purpose? So 15 years ago, I was living next door to a woman who was diagnosed with schizophrenia and she was on and off her medications and you never knew when she was on and when she was off. So she was unable to have children. And she became preoccupied with my babies. She was my next door neighbor. And in one of her delusions, she believed that my new baby was actually her baby. You know, she would call me in the middle of the night, right after I'd gotten done nursing my baby and say, I see you, you're feeding my baby. She would threaten us. Um, she would accuse me of all kinds of bizarre behavior Things like coming into her home and stealing her car keys or putting a bird in her toilet or, um, you know, really other bizarre kinds of things that I won't go into details. This was really disturbing to me. And at one point, I honestly felt like I was going crazy with anxiety and fear that I was having a hard time functioning. It was, you know, with a brand new baby, I didn't dare leave my baby alone. I had that baby sleeping by me all the time. Cause like I said, we would get calls in the middle of the night saying she could see us. Um, she would come over and knock on our door in the middle of the night. She would wander the neighborhood. And I honestly wouldn't dare leave my home without first looking outside my window to see if she was wandering the neighborhood or if her car was in her driveway or not, because if it wasn't, I knew she was gone. If it was, I wasn't sure if I was safe to go out in my garden. You know, many times I'd be out in my yard and then I'd come in and get a phone call um, saying that she was watching me. I remember this reaching ahead when she was in jail. My fear reached ahead when she was in jail after a domestic violence case where she had choked her husband because according to her statements to the police, she saw my face on his body and thought it was me. Um, so I was told this by the police. And as you can imagine, that really was terrifying to me. And I remember thinking, I really can't live like this. I cannot live next door to someone who is preoccupied with my baby and me. And I was part of her delusions. And it made my life quite fearful. But I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to get out of the situation and I didn't know how to handle it in my daily life and what to do. So the fear for my children's safety and my own safety was very real to me. And it was paralyzing me from living a life of peace and joy that I wanted. It truly became all consuming. And I didn't know how to overcome this to function normally. So one day as I was praying for help, to deal with my intense fear, a knock came at the door and my neighbor would often come knock on my door. So it always kind of jarred me. But as I looked, I saw that it was a woman in my congregation and I opened the door and I wasn't close to this woman at this time, but she handed me a book and she said, 
I felt impressed to give you this book. And the truth is she really would have no idea of my internal fear and what was going on in my life. She was, we weren't that close, but she gave me a book and it was called the gift of fear by Gavin De Becker. And this book, I feel like was such a heaven send to me and it changed my perspective on fear and it helped me overcome the intense fear that I was experiencing. So I felt like she was an inspired angel in my life to bring me this needed book at the moment that I was really struggling with fear and it taking over my life. And yes, we became beautiful friends. This is one of my lifelong friends that had brought me this book, but the book ultimately helped me understand the purpose of fear and the gift of fear. So does fear have a purpose? Yes, it does. From a biological standpoint perspective, the main function of fear and anxiety is to help give our bodies a signal that we're in danger and that we need to have um, an adaptive response to get out of danger, like fight, flight, or freeze. But this instinctual and intuitive gift is important to our survival. However, the book goes into, if we overuse this gift of fear by being in constant anxiety or chronic fear about everything, kind of get stuck in it, then it will stop being a gift. It will stop serving us in the way that it was designed to serve us. So we stop becoming sensitive to those warning signals in our body. And when I read this, this just helped shift my focus so much away from being obsessed with the fear and focusing on how amazing our gift is, that gift that was created in us to help us survive. And ultimately what it did for me is it helped me practice to learn to trust God again and to trust my instincts and my intuition more. What if that gift of fear was to help us not only survive, but also help us learn to rely on our Lord and learn how to trust with faith that he will give us a warning sign when we truly are in danger, when we need it, not just some delusional thinking that we get stuck in. Virginia H. Pierce said, perhaps our God's greatest hope is that through our fears, we may choose to turn to him. The uncertainties of earth life can help to remind each of us that we are dependent on him. But that reminder is not automatic. It involves our agency. We must choose to take our fears to him. We must choose to trust him and we must choose to allow him to direct us. So the gift of fear is truly, I believe, to help us turn to God and learn to trust him again. And he is sending people to us all the time, podcasts, people, books, scriptures, the spirit, things to give us evidence to help us overcome our fears and to ultimately help us rely on him again. So fear and pain can overwhelm us if we stay there too long. So how do we not overuse fear in our lives? I believe the only way to step out of fear, and I think God helps us with this all the time, the only way is to start trusting God again and to turn our lives back over to him and to know that he will help us overcome that. I love the scripture in John that says, perfect love casteth out all fear. We know that God is love from John also. So perfect love casteth out all fear. God casts out fear. God is the love that helps us cast out that debilitating fear that we can get stuck in and help us learn to trust him again and trust that we will be warned by our gift of fear, that natural inborn intuitive instinctual response if we don't overuse it, if we don't get stuck in it and we learn to trust and give our trust back to God. I think one of the best ways to do this is to focus on love, focus on joy, focus on gratitude, focus on the things that are working in our lives, focus on the miracles that we are seeing that God is demonstrating to us and building our evidence that he's there. 
there are many times when I've been struck by fear or pain and have had a hard time moving forward. And, you know, it's a process of gradually trusting again and knowing that God will send you the things that you need to help you when you need them and when you're ready for them. And I know that that is true for my own experience. And I hope that you'll see evidence in your own life that number one, fear does have a purpose. Number two, though, we need to not get stuck in fear so that we can turn our fears over to God and let perfect love cast out our fear and help us with that. So where in your life have you seen evidence and experienced God helping you overcome fears or pain or past hurts in your life? I'd love to hear those in the comments. And I hope that you can overcome the fears that are currently happening in your life through God's love and his help. And I hope that for you and I hope that for me and, and I hope you have a great week this week. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.